All right, so in this video, I wanna cover how to build a custom relay and fuse box that is waterproof and it's pretty small uh, footprint wise. And it comes in multiple different sizes depending how many fuses and relays you want. So, um, but first I wanna talk about why you would need such a thing. Well, I don't, you know, if you own an old motorcycle, car or whatever, back then they didn't use relays pretty much maybe one or two in the whole car or whatever. Um, I guess it was like high tech back then, right? So they didn't use a lot of them. They probably cost a lot of money. Anyway, and then as time goes on, you usually like upgrade things. Oh, I want uh, a headlight that's brighter, so more wattage, it pulls more current. So in that situation, you'd want to run a relay so you can get the full power or uh, don't go through the switch and burn up switches and stuff like that. So for example, on this old car that I'm working on, and this applies to motorcycles too, you go turn on the headlight, what happens is that power goes from the battery to the switch and then to the actual bulb. And that wire is usually pretty thin, it's long in length, and also the switch contacts themselves and whatnot over time. Um, it builds up resistance and then you get a large voltage drop at the bulb and then your headlights are dim or whatever. So to combat that, you can put a relay in. The switch just triggers the relay coil and you have an electrical shortcut from the battery or your bus bar to the bulb and you can run high current through that wire and therefore you get uh, brighter headlights or maybe you're going with more wattage and you can't go through the switch because it'll burn it up, okay? So there's a lot of options for relays out there. Uh, the most common is the Bosch style. Uh, which I'll picture here. The problem with that is, you know, they're single relays. So let's say you want four or five of them. Now all of a sudden you need some kind of panel to mount them on, and then you need all these terminal blocks and whatnot, and therefore the whole assembly gets pretty large and it's hard to package and it's not waterproof and it doesn't look as clean. Okay, so um, next up, I <clears throat> actually bought a cheap Chinese uh, relay box off Amazon. I, I got it in and I was looking at it and it came with just enough terminals, all universal size terminals. So if you want to jump up or down and wire gauge, you can't really do that. And if you screw up a terminal, then I don't know what you do because I don't know where you get these, these from because it comes as a kit, right? Also it had seals, but again, they were universal, uh, not ideal. And the relays I think were you know, Chinese or whatever. And I'm like, you know what? I don't want a relay failing. So the whole $30 kit from a price point was cool, but just didn't do it for me, right? So then I looked into, uh, there was another company, I think Eaton made one, uh, which was pretty popular. However, the problem is I think the, the amp rating for the circuits were 15 amps and I wanna go higher than that in some cases. And then I believe it had an internal bus bar, so you can only do a negative trigger or a positive trigger or whatever. I don't quote me on that, but it had some kind of metal strip or bus bar in there, so you're kind of limited to how you trigger the relay. So then I found um, this company, which I'll, which we're going to use in this video. It's GEP. Little Fuse makes it as well, um, but it uses standard Metropac 280 terminals and ISO 280 relays and the mini fuses. This is all standard stuff. It's made by, most of these parts are made by Delphi, Delphi or Aptive now, um, which is high quality stuff. It's fully waterproof, sealed, and it's densely packed. You can put a lot of components in a small space. And then they have some that are very small for a couple fuses or a couple relays, or you can get a large one that I used because I had the space for it and in case I ever need to uh, expand and add circuits. So this video is pretty long, um, but you can jump around if you want. But basically I kind of, it's like an hour long, man. But anyway, it works great. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. And I also 3D printed a bracket to mount it in the car and it's just perfect, exactly what I needed. All right, and before we jump into the video, uh, don't forget I got a free mini motorcycle course, like 40 plus free videos right up here. You could grab it for free. It has a ton of free maintenance and repairs and it does have some electrical in there. So definitely grab it for free. It's up here and in the video description.
All right, so let's go over some of the parts that I have here. This is the 96 position PDC, Power Distribution Center. So it's got a little cap that snaps on. You have mounting holes, you can get little, uh, okay, so you can see this thing is 100% plastic. There are no bus bars in here or anything, so you have to hook up every single wire. It's 96 positions, and here are the holes on the back. You can see that they're just all not populated. And this is pretty small. I mean, we're talking, you know, only a few inches each way. And then here are some relays. This is a 35 amp relay, four pin, okay? Here's also a four pin. This is a 20 amp or so, okay? So you can see you can fit a lot in this, in this box here. And then here are the mini fuses. So you can see a fuse goes in there like that. Obviously there's no pin, so this is all wobbly, but you get the idea. So we're gonna load it up with fuses and relays and then you cap it, it's waterproof, and so forth. So this is, I believe, the largest size, and you can gang more than, than uh, uh, one of these. So I think maybe this is uh, where they hook together. I don't know, somehow they, you're able to hook these, snap these together and make multiples. Um, but over here, I got one of their smaller ones, and this is a 12 position. So you can see it's much smaller. You know, you can fit some components in here like this. You know, maybe a couple relays, a couple fuses. Um, this here, I'm gonna have near the battery and it's just gonna fuse some power leads. And it'll ha it has a nice mounting thing here, so I'll mount it directly to the battery somewhere and, and then this will be fused power out to some devices. Okay, over here I bought crimpers. Um, these are for 12 and 10 gauge, specifically to Metropac uh, 280. Um, I also have these. Um, these should work. Um, however, the, this is, I haven't verified yet, but basically you see here I got uh, 22 to 20, 24 to 22, 20 to 18, and 16 to 14. Uh, but basically for all of this, I'm going to be mainly using these because this is for high current you know I'm using 12 and 10 gauge wire mainly okay so I, I pre crimped some wires so you can see there's a seal on here and a terminal so let's talk about all those components now um, over here are some these are wire locks so basically they go on the back here and they lock the wires in place so terminal I think they're called TPA terminal position assurance or something I don't know but anyway they're locked so make sure that so the wires don't come out um, over here I have 14 to 12 gauge female terminals so if you zoom in here here's the the part number um, this was ordered from Waytech. over here I have some cavity plugs so this is if a wire doesn't go in the hole you stick a plug I have blue seals here are the uh, the little clip nuts for the power distribution block. Um, here are 10 to 12 gauge terminals for this. We have some gray seals, we have some green seals, and I got a bunch of wire. So mainly what I'm using is TXL wire. This is 12 gauge here. I got some 10 gauge over here. Um, so 10 gauge will be my 30 amp. 12 gauge will be for 20 amperes, um, so tons of wire. Okay, what I've done is I made some leads ahead of time, so that way we can quickly assemble this. So I got uh, some triggers here, some power in. I got some little guys here to connect, just little jumpers and whatnot. So I'll show you how to crimp these in a second here. Okay, also there's numbers on these rows and columns. So here, I can't see it, but this is one, goes to eight, and then over here it says nine all the way to 16 and so forth all the way to 96 which is the last position so we're going to be working from the back everything referenced on my spreadsheet is from the back and then when you flip it over it's going to be reversed but anyway i am detailing everything from the back or the underside of it uh, some other information that's useful is i found a chart for um gauge wire sizes in TXL and it gives you the diameter 
so you can size up the proper seals and and so forth so that's just that was just good information okay i found the pinout or the specs for the the relays this is just something i printed so i can see this was before i purchased any parts i can see the pinout and whatnot so and, and then here's the wiring diagrams so again you hit this with voltage and you get high current through 30 through 87 okay and there's other versions there's versions you can get with diodes and there's um ones that have five pins that has the 87a which is normally closed which i didn't need and then here's the 20 amp version same thing something else was that was useful is if you google uh metropac 280 spec sheet you'll get this pdf document and it has all the connectors you know i went with metropac 280 uh, connectors since i had the crimper and everything and the pins and all that so it just made sense so i I got all the two pin, three pin, five pin uh, connectors that I needed for this project. And then here they have the terminals, the cable range size. See, they, they do everything in millimeters squared. So you have to go reference your, your T, you, you know, that uh, chart that I showed here. See, they got a millimeters, uh, oh, I converted. Actually, I had to find that out. So millimeters squared. Um, anyway, they have the part numbers for all the pins, and then here are all the seals. They have everything you need. They have all the part numbers for everything, so I just had to order a bunch of stuff. And these are rated for 25 to 30 amp max. So, I mean, if you look here, you know, it's based on temperature and whatnot, but they're good. Uh, they're rated for 30 amps, so that's, that's awesome. Okay, so here's my spreadsheet. Um, that I printed out and then I doodled all the the wiring layout so you got to plan ahead um, this may even be an older one but what I want to point out here is you know here's my positive bus bar and then it feeds power into all the fuses and then here I got little jumpers from the fuses to 30 see that and then um, here in pencil are all my triggers so I have a plus trigger, a plus trigger, a minus, a plus, and a plus. So I have a mixed bag of, of what triggers the coil versus the switch. You know, I, do I have a positive trigger or a negative trigger? And then I'm just trying to lay out some uh, switched, ignition switched fuses here. Uh, and then I have a negative bus bar, so all 85 minuses on, the, on some of the coils go here, and one of the device gets um, grounded here. So I know this is, this is my custom application, but I'm just want to show you that um, you need to plan this out so we'll go to the computer I'll show you the spreadsheet all right so here we are on CE auto electric and um, I want to show you a cool a configurator that they have for these PDC boxes so it, it helps in planning and determining how, how how big of a box do you need first off here they have you know instructions on how to do this and then they have all sorts of uh size boxes so let, let's just check out what they have here and you can also go to Waytech too um but Waytech has a minimum buy and uh, a minimum price and all that so anyway um so right here they got a 48 position and little GEP and little fuse both use the Metropac 280 uh stuff 48 position 18 24 12 72 96 and a 60 so you you got a lot of options here i had room for the 96 and i went for it i could have went smaller i probably should have but whatever i i have room to grow if i need it so it's 55 bucks just for the plastic housing and it comes with those blue clips and everything and i think nuts and bolts so anyway after that what you want to do is you go up here check this out resources configurator Okay, so here you select the PDC that you want. It has all the sizes here. So let's just go to 96, and then you select what component. So you got relays, fuses, diodes, circuit breakers. Uh, let's go to relays, um, and here are all the relays that you can put. So all you do is you go like this. Let's say I want a 50 amp. Let me, let's me. let say I want you know a bunch of these, and you drag them around. See that? That's pretty cool. And then you can add it to your shopping list. So anyway, I don't want these. Let's do, um, I got uh, two 
35 amp relays, right? I got them over here. And then I got uh, 20 ampers. I think I got four of those. So I got one here. So I'm configuring how my actual uh, board is. So I think this is how it's laid out. And then I did mini fuses. I got a bunch of 20 ampers. So 20 amp right here. And then I think I did a 20 amp here. So this, this 20 amp uh protects this one and then i did a battery power 20 amp circuit uh let's do 30 amp so i think i did this here those 30 ampers protect these relays and then i think i did a bunch of um ignition switched fuses here you know what i have this backwards here hold on see I get confused going upside down and whatnot. So I think this is how it was right here. There we go. So this, this 35 amp relay here is ignition switched, which um, the wire comes out and powers these five circuits. And I got some spares and whatnot. Not necessarily are they all five amp. I did, haven't determined. I got it written down somewhere. But anyway, this here, this section here, this 35 amp relay and all these five, five ampers are key on source. And then this one here is for my AC compressor in the future. Um, I plan on putting AC in this car at a later time. I just wanted to wire pre-wire most of this in. So I'm ready to go. Uh, then I got low beams, high beams, horn. And then this is my starter solenoid. Um, there's, you don't really need to do this, but I did it because um, it's just better, okay? And then I got a 20-amp battery, uh, whatever. And then look at all this room I have in the middle here to upgrade to whatever. Okay, so you're going to want to print this out. Definitely print this out and then, you know, take a snapshot of it or whatever. And this is the start of, of your um, PDC. Okay, so here's a Google Sheet spreadsheet that I made. And what I have here is my PDC, which is eight by 12, fully configured. Every cell here represents what goes in it. Okay. So over here, I just copied it and I, I did a blank one so I can show you what I did. First off, you're going to want to number the columns and the rows, just like they're numbered on the plastic part. So you know, if you flip the plastic part over, you're going to see these numbers. You're going to want to put that in there. And then this represents the 96 positions that you can populate. Okay. So um, another thing I did is here on a separate uh, sheet here, I have the two relays, um, which I can copy. So 35 amp single pole, single throw uh, relay. This is what it looks like for the pinout from the bottom. Remember, now we're looking at the bottom pin side. Okay, so let's say I want a relay. So I, I copy this, and what do I want? I want a relay here. I want one next to it, and then I'm going to fuse it, right? So I'm going to go F in 30, right? Oh, actually, F 30 in sounds better, and then this is F 30 out or whatever, right? And then you can copy this. So you can populate this really fast. And then the 20 amper pin is right here. Let me paste that in here. Got another one. I got three relays, right? I'm going to copy this, but I'm going to change it to 20. Oh, not 200. 20. You get the idea, right? You can plan this out. Okay, so that, that's all fused and everything, right? That's all good. Um, and look, I got plugs here, right? You can, let's say, oh, I want to plug all this. You know, this is all going to be plugged. You can drag it and so forth. And then you can find out what's going in each of these spots easily right here in the sheet uh, based off the diagram. Remember, it's backwards because you're not looking at the top. You're looking at the bottom. Um, but basically, I printed this out, and then I was able to make a wiring diagram, a hookup schematic, if you will, um, for everything. 
And then over here, you could see I, I kind of labeled everything. So I got the horn, low beam, high beam, AC. You know, you put all the you put all the devices that you want to power in here, and then you kind of plan it. So definitely do this, and then um, you know, print it out, and uh, go from there. Okay, so once you have your spreadsheet done, um, you can come over here, print it out, and doodle on it. So. Um, I'm doing this sideways here and I'm doing this with my daughter's crayons, but okay, we have the battery, right? We have a 12 volt plus. So what we want to do is um, bring power into all the fuses. So we got one here, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we got five wires here. And then over here, I'm doing another one. So this is battery, uh, a circuit. Okay, I want 12 volts at all times to that circuit. And this feeds all the fuses. So what we're going to do here is we're going to put a big splice. Okay, also one of my, two of my relays are po uh, negative triggers. So that means I can power the coils straight to the battery. So this one right here, 86 plus, and this one here, 86 plus. Okay, so all these wires will get spliced to the battery. Okay. Next up, we can um, power up the uh, relays. So we're gonna do a little jumper. So right here, little jumper little jumper, 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 and oh, I forgot one more. There's one more wire here for battery in. Sorry. See, this gets confusing. Okay, and then jumper here. Okay, so we're feeding all the fuses. We got two coils that are negative triggers, so those this, this side can go to positive, and then these are all our jumpers. Now let's talk about... Uh, triggers so triggers are switches that control the other side of the coil for the relay and turn it on so right here 86 plus um, in this case this is my negative trigger for AC and I don't have AC on this yet this is for future so I'm gonna just put a plug here and I'm also not wiring up the 87 because that's um, again I'm not I'm, I'm planning for the future okay we got a trigger here we got another trigger here so that's three so far we got a trigger here And then we got a trigger here, but this is negative. Okay, so every other trigger is positive. This is going to be negative. Okay, so that's that. Okay, now let's talk about uh, grounds. Right? So we have this 85 minus, which goes to the ground. This, we're, we're, we're not doing anything with this. We got this one here, All right? Oh, geez, I did not mean to do that, sorry. All right, disregard that, I meant to go here. And then we got this one here. Oh, no, that's a trigger. Forget that one too, Jesus. Okay, just that one. Are you confused yet? All right, and then we got 85 minus here. I crossed out the wrong one here. This is ground. <laughs> oh, man. I swear I'm doing this right, I swear. All right, so we got all the coils grounded. All the 85 minuses that are not a negative trigger are grounded. Okay, now let's talk about outputs. Um, this is my ignition, and I am going to be splicing it, and I'm going to go in, in here. 
okay? So this one relay is gonna power five circuits that I want key on, and I will divide these up and go on to different devices, all right? Then I have this 87, this 87, and this 87, which I will put into a three pin connector. It just makes things uh, easier. Then I got another device here. This is gonna go on a separate output, okay? And then all these here, these will be five different, five different circuits. I'm gonna take one of these circuits and then here I got a battery fuse and I'm gonna do a two pin connector and that's gonna power on some, uh, some stuff. I just want these together because one's battery, one's key on. So that's kinda, you know, this is a super messy uh, quick schematic here. I can show, you know, later on I'll show you the one that I actually put some thought into and I put wire gauge sizes for um, all the uh, gauge wires. So 10 gauge is 30 amp, 12 gauge is 20. Um, the coil side can be very thin because it's very minimal. The triggers can be very thin, but again, I just want it to stay 10, 12 gauge and 14 gauge because I had crimpers for all that. I did not have crimpers for 18, 20 gauge or whatever. So whatever, some of these wires are overkill, but that's okay. I just noticed I was out of uh, frame. So here's a two pin, three pin connector, one pin, two pin, three pin, one pin. Um, you get the idea though. Okay, so referencing my spreadsheet here, the first thing I'm going to do is put in plugs everywhere they need to go. So that'll just rule out all those openings. All right, so these are all plugs. So the rest is for wires. All right, so let me show you how to put the seal and crimp on a terminal. Um, the box, the PDC takes female pins and then the male pins, uh, you know, usually are in plugs or whatever. But anyway, so you need a bunch of these for the PDC. Uh, these seals are different size for different thicknesses of wire. So the blue works good with 10 gauge. So you can, you can get a feel for it is how much friction or compression there is on that wire. Um, the, the gray I've been using for 12 gauge, which works nice. Okay, and then uh, for 14 gauge, the green. This actually could be a little tighter, but that's what I've been using. So those are the three uh, colors and sizes I've been using. Okay, so I got a 10 to 12 gauge uh, pin here. So what we need to do is we need to strip off just a little bit, you know, like eighth inch or so, that's all you need. Okay. So we'll move the seal up. And I've done it both ways where you, you can crimp, you're gonna have to hit this twice. So see these tangs here? This is one crimp, and then crimp number two is the seal. I don't have a crimper that'll do both in, in one shot. I mean, I think those crimpers are like insanely expensive. Okay, so here's our crimper. Uh, it has positions for 12 and for 10 for the, you know, depending what gauge you use. And then it has the, the center one uh, for the seal. So this is for the seal, this is for 10 and 12, all right? So, um, you're gonna load it in here like this, right? So that's how that's how it goes. So this is for the copper wires and this is for the seal and insulation and that's just like a strain relief and it also holds the seal. So what I like to do first is actually just load this in the crimper first. And actually I found that the 10 position works better for the 12, believe it or not. Okay, so I have that in here. Now you wanna get the full width of 
of that right there. So that is flush, okay? So then what I do is I just pulled it in place here. Try to get this in shot here. So right there and squeeze all the way down. And then I always inspect the crimp, make sure it's nice and good. And I always give it a tug to make sure that it is not slipping. If it starts to slip, then you need to hit it harder, right? It's not a good crimp. Okay, and then you can float the seal around a little bit to get it to where you want. So that's a good spot right there. And then what I do is I pinch this a little bit to close the tangs a little because it doesn't fit all that great in here. Now I'm going to load it in the insulation spot. And you got to flip it upside down because it's the other way. And there we go. So it's pinched on the seal and insulation. And that's, that's a good crimp. Okay, and then as far as like using a connector and whatnot, same thing like the, with the PDC. So you just insert the terminal from the back. All right, I know why it won't fit. This is for male pins. <laughs> I'm trying to demo this on here. Well, I know what I can do. Here, connector or PDC, no big deal, right? Doesn't matter what you're using. So let's just say I put this, you know, treat it as a connector, right? You have this in here, so it's locked. Now in here, you need to find that tang, push it down to release it. There you go. So you need to, don't pull on it, actually push it in and then put some pressure on it and then pop it out. Now you do lose a little tension on here because you, you're depressing this. So you wanna make sure you, you know, there's good, maybe pop that up and make sure it's, it's a little proud when you go to push it back in. Uh, but this was just for testing. So anyway, that's how you work with all this stuff. Okay, next up, we're gonna take care of all the power in to the fuses, okay? So I have two 10 gauge leads, and these are longer than they need to be, but basically I got my terminal and my seal, and I'm just gonna follow my um, diagram here. Now, there's a tab on here, and that's gonna point to up. You can see that there is a little um, there's a little uh, tab in there that catches this hook. Okay, so we're going to insert it here. So this is going to go to my fuse in. So you make sure you want to hear that audible click. Okay, next one again, it's ten gauge, and that's going to go here. Okay. All right, the rest are 12 gauge. So that is gonna go, one's gonna go here. Another one here. Another one here. We have one over here. Okay, I did hear that one click. And last but not least, we have one over here. All right, so what I'm gonna do, there's a couple more that need battery power. Um, however, I'm waiting on some other wiring, other wires. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna tape these off and label them as battery in. Okay, so this is all the power coming into the fuse. Now we need to come out of the fuse and uh, to any relays. Okay, so this is all labeled battery plus. And what we have here are little jumpers. So basically it's going to go to the other side of the fuse to the um, to power up the relay. All right, so over here we have a 10 gauge. 
So we're going to go um, out. So it's going to go from here. This is the other side of the fuse. Good audible click there. And then here is the 30 of the uh, relay. So we're just going to come around here. Okay, so it's just a loop right there. Okay, we got one more over here. Okay, so those are the 10 gauge ones. They're kind of kind of stiff, if you will. All right, so next let's go over here. And we got to power up one, two, three of these. Okay, so these are the powers for four relays. We got two 30 ampers here. These are all 20. So we got five relays across here. There's one more down here. Okay, so, so far we got power coming in from the battery into the fuse, out of the fuse, and into our five relays to the 30 terminal. All right, next up I made up a bunch of wires, which will be the uh, triggers. So let's go ahead and wire up all the triggers, everything that will trigger the relay on. Okay, this will be our ignition switched on, which is pink. So this will be our pink trigger to turn on the 30 amper and this these wires are way heavier than they need to be okay we're gonna skip this one this is for AC which is in the future so I'm not not even gonna wire up that trigger I can actually plug it right now next we're gonna go to our high beam relay next up this is our low beam trigger which is the tan wire here, okay. And again, I'm waiting on wire for that one. Okay, and then over here, this is for our starter solenoid. Okay, so I'm missing some, I got some wire on order and uh, whatnot, so I'm just gonna tape these up for now, and these are so far uh, four of our triggers for all these relays. So I'm going to go ahead and label that with some tape. 
okay, this is getting kind of complicated, and I bet you on camera, you're probably like, what the hell's going on? But now, we have our power in, into the relays. We got our triggers in, uh, most of them. And then now I'm gonna set up some of the output. So this is actually the output from the relay. This will be the 87 uh, terminal, and this is gonna be our load. So this is actually gonna run to the device. So this is high and low beam, and this is the starter solenoid. So starter solenoid is over, over here. Okay, and I'm gonna make sure to label that out. Okay, same with these. We're gonna go to the 87 terminal. So tan is over here. Okay. And this one is over here. Okay, and I'm gonna label these out. And again, I'm missing some, I got some wire on old order. Okay, so here's what we have so far. We have all this, which will get spliced. So we all have this battery in. This will all get spliced to a large gauge cable. I'm not sure if it's gonna be two or four or what. Uh, I'm gonna see how many of these I can fit in the splice and get it crimped and that's gonna, and obviously it's gonna be a large enough cable to supply enough current to the demands of this box. So we got battery in to the fuse. Got power out of the fuse and we jump it. So like right here, this, this right here is power in to the fuse, power out of the fuse, right? So right here, this is gonna be a 30 amp uh, fuse. Let me go ahead and load that just so you can see. Cause I do have all the pins in here for that. So right here is a 30 amp fuse. Now we don't have all the pins in here just yet, but basically underneath that, so power goes into one leg of the fuse, out the other, and it's going to the pin of the relay. So this relay goes right here, and we have most of the pins populated here. This is backwards, I got confused. Okay, so we have this here, 10 gauge coming in, so this is 30 amps in to the fuse, out of the fuse, and into the relay. Okay, so this is the 30 amp fuse right here. All right, and then our, we're still missing some pins here, but basically the relay is gonna go right there. So power into the fuse, then power into this, and, and so forth. So that's where we're at so far. Okay, the additional wire that, wires, wire colors that I um, ordered online came in. So, here are all my triggers, okay? I have a negative ground trigger as well. And this is for my horn relay, it's just a negative trigger. So that wire goes in over here, 85A. And I can't even freaking see it here, let's see here. Okay, there it goes, and I'm gonna loop it together with these. And these are labeled all my triggers. So I got five relay triggers grouped here. These go to 86 plus, or in my case, one of them goes 85A, okay? Now, this is a black trigger, and it's for my horn, and it's gonna be a positive output and on my car it was black it was black positive wire and I don't want to do that so I'm gonna switch colors to gray so that's over here which is 87 and I'm gonna connectorize it with this one here so I'm gonna put a three position plug on this and these three 
kind of go in the same area, so I'm going to build a, a sub harness for this. Okay, so I'm just zip tying it to keep together. This is a single output for my starter solenoid. All right, so that's that. Okay, now let's take care of some 85 terminals ground. All you got to do is ground the coil, and I'm using 14 gauge. I can use freaking 20, 22 gauge. It's it's very little current, but I only have terminals down to 14 gauge, so that's why I'm using 14 gauge. So anyway, let's go to all the 85 negatives. So that's one here. Going all the way over here. one over here it's getting pretty crowded you probably can't even see what I'm doing here okay so we got those three here all right and then we got the one down here eighty five minus all right so I will put a zip tie on these and these are all okay now let's talk about this relay here I got a 30 amp fuse and a 35 amp big re relay. Um, this is my ignition, switched ignition. So key on, this gets 12 volts, okay? So what I'm gonna have is one large wire coming out of here that needs to be spliced to however many I can fit. Okay, so what I have here is five 14 gauge wires and I got one for my boost solenoids uh, ECU enable, trans controller enable, intercooler water pump, and then I have a spare. Can I fit the spare in here? I don't know. So what I'm going to do, this is, I believe, an 8 gauge to 10 gauge step down butt connector. So this is going to fit on the 10 gauge wire, and hopefully I can cram all five in here and crimp it down and then heat shrink it and it should be okay and then basically all these five are going to go to individual fuses and then I'll I'll take that power out to wherever I need it to go so let me think about that a little bit and see how, what I can fit in there all right so I got my Harbor Freight hydraulic wire crimper tool um, these dies that they come with do not match up to the actual size that you need so you got to just kind of fit one in here that you think might be okay and sometimes I start with a larger one crimp it switch out for smaller dies and crimp it and then I also have to turn it 180 to get a nice squash if you will alright so I got my five wires and they do fit in here so let me just just give me a second here I will try to uh, I'm gonna see if I can zip tie this and see if it'll make life easier for me. All right, so let me, let me see here. So I think it can go in a little further. Let me, let me strip these a little, little more. I think I'll feel a little more comfortable that way. So just give me a second here. Okay, I stripped back some. I gave it a little twist. And then I snipped it so it's nice and square, and, and it goes in a lot further um, this way. So let me just double check it here. Okay, so we're that's all the way in. Let's go ahead and give it a. Okay, so it crimped it, but it put little wings on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in 90 degrees and hit it again. Here we go. All right, so that is well crushed in there. Okay, so that looks that looks good. And of course, I can you know, I'll take the zip tie off after I after I heat shrink it. 
But yeah, that's in there pretty good. So we'll put a little heat shrink on here and then we'll hit this. But first we gotta trim this. So I don't think it needs to be any longer than say here. So we'll snip this guy. That guy goes all the way in there. So we'll put our heat shrink on there, put that on there, and that is our splice. I'm not gonna crimp that on camera, but you get the idea. All right, so here's what it looks like. It turned out pretty good. Um, this one's a little long here, that sucks. But anyway, I think that'll work nice. Uh, my furnace is about to kick on, so that sucks. So anyway, this is the 30 out on the ignition. So let's put that in first. So start putting these in. And I probably should have made these a little longer. All right, so there's that. This is controlling five circuits, and then these will be key on outs. So these will be populated to go out and power key on devices. All right. Oh, and these two here go to um, battery. Um, they are 86 plus that I forgot to put in. I was waiting on some thinner wire. So this goes here. And here. And these will also be part of here. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. Uh, this will all get spliced. Hopefully I can fit it <laughs> into something. So if I can't fit this in one splice, I will split it to two splices and it'll be two large gauge leads that will go to my bus bar. So whatever works, I will try to fit this however I can. But basically this all is battery power, okay? These are my five triggers. These are three outputs that I will put on a three pin connector. This will go on a single pin connector and I still gotta do stuff over here. So I'll probably jump ahead a little bit, do the couple of these, and then I'll show you um, where I'm at. And of course, this is ground. These all go to ground, and this is nothing more than to uh, energize the coil so they can be very thin wires and whatnot. Okay, so I went ahead and made my splices, so I wanna talk a little bit about how I did that. Okay, so over here, I got these step-down connectors. Um, I forget, it's uh, eight gauge to 10 or something like that. Anyway, all these ground wires, I was able to jam in here, crimp it nice, and then uh, a 10 gauge fits in here nice. 10 gauge is overkill for grounding the coils and, and one of my devices, but that's kind of the wire that fits in there nice, so I kind of went with that. Um, the lead is lo long and it's not terminated at this point. I gotta fit it up in the car and trim it. Uh, this one here, I used a number two gauge mega butt connector first what i did is i crimped it here all the red wires fit in here nice i crimped it then pretend this wire is not i i later installed this but all right so what i did first here is i crimped all the red wires they fit nice in here and then without this wire in here i put this in a vise vertically and i melted a solder pellet in here and you can see all the solder that came out here. So this thing is 
full of solder and a lot of it wicked in. So this is crimped and soldered. I just want it to get a really good joint here. Um, so I'll just leave this little booger on here. I, I'm not gonna mess with that. And then over here, this is two gauge welding cable that I use for all my battery cables. It works out nice, super flexible. I just crimped the hell out of that here. And that's, that's that. So this is the battery lead. This will go to the bus bar and this is what's gonna supply power and distribute it within this fuse relay panel. Um, again, this is longer and it's not terminated, but that's, that's what it is. Okay, so I started putting in all the components. Um, so I'm not gonna bore you with putting each and every single one of these. We'll just do one of them. Now remember, we've been looking at the backside. The spreadsheet is the backside, but this is flipped, right? So you gotta pay attention. But anyway, um, so right here, these two terminals here are for a fuse. So I'm gonna just pop this right in. Okay, and that fuse feeds this relay. So these four pins here are for this relay and they just pop right in. And again, I, I did it so the writing, I pinned everything so the writing is, what's going on here? So I pinned it such that everything, the lettering is facing this way, not versus upside down, because that's how the spec sheet has it. So anyway, this fuse here, 30 amper, feeds this relay, this fuse, this one, and so forth. So I, that's how I did it. And then this fuse feeds this. This is a battery powered uh, circuit. And then these are, this is an ignition key on relay. And it feeds all these circuits plus I have a spare. Um, these fuses, the values are not correct right now. I'm just kind of playing with it. So, and then your cover goes on, right? So that's awesome. And then I 3D printed this bracket. You know, I was gonna make it out of sheet metal and form it and whatnot, and then I'm like, I'm like, screw that. I'll just design one and 3D print it. So it goes on like that. And then there's two holes here with support material. I'll punch that out and that gets bolted to the fender. And this guy is gonna live like this. So I think that's gonna be pretty nice. Okay, so let's, let's test this thing, right? Um, just to make sure we have all our connections correct. And I wanna do this before I heat shrink and wrap it all up to make sure I have everything correct. All I'm gonna do is run this thing off a nine volt battery. It's enough to click the relay and measure voltage. That's all you need. I don't need to grab anything crazy. So, so we'll go red. Let's see, I don't know if I can hook it up in here. Okay, that works. So we got power there. Okay, we'll go. Around over here. Okay, at this point I have one circuit that will get 12 volts um, during this. Look up my meter. All right, where is that? Right here. This guy here should show. All right, so that's the only one. I got eight volts, so that's battery voltage, right? So that's the only one that's supplying battery. So now let's uh, trigger a relay. Okay, so I'm gonna insert a pin in here. Okay, this is my this is the only negative trigger that I have. So we'll go ahead and and let's see if we can hear the click. Hear that click when I just go like this? Okay, so I was able to energize that coil with a negative trigger and the outputs over here on the gray wire. Boom, eight volts. Okay, let's go next. So the next one's the pink wire, which is a positive trigger. Get a positive on here. Let's see if we can get that to click. 
Okay, so that clicks. All right, and the pink is, well, it has eight volts on this because this is key ignition on, right? Okay, we got this circuit here. We got this circuit. And then we got this pin here. All the pink wires should have eight volts. And they do, okay? Awesome. Okay, now let's go to the purple. Okay, I heard a click, and the only purple one is here. Eight volts, perfect. Okay, next is the tan, which was B for my headlights. Okay, I heard a click, and then the tan output is over here. Eight volts. Okay, last but not least is the green. Okay, we got clicking. And the green output's over here. Eight volts. Okay, so everything's working the way it should. I'm going to heat shrink this up and make it look pretty. And we should be good to go. All right, so here it is all finished up. You can see it's mounted with the 3D printed bracket right on the fender with existing holes that were there. So I kind of just matched it up so I didn't have to drill a bunch of stuff. Um, all the wires... I try to hide as best as possible, so I got some harness wrap and electrical tape on the wires that come in, and they're routed under the fender. So there's some space um, above the fender well, but in, in this cavity here. So I just ran all the wires here. In the factory, they did it here right on the fender well. I didn't want that. I had thought I'd just... It'd be pretty cool to hide them all up in there. And then I have a positive and negative bus bar over there mounted on the firewall, which uh, has some caps that I still need to put on there. But basically, cleaned up some of the wiring, and now I have this nice fuse and relay, and it's a distribution center. So that's awesome, because all this stuff, a lot of this power draw went to the dash and back. So now I decrease the distance, doesn't go through switches, and I have maximum voltage and current at my headlights and other devices, and my headlights are so much brighter, you know? So it's awesome. And um, in here, I still need to build a water intercooler water tank, so it's going to occupy a lot of the space, so you're not even going to see the wires and whatnot. And there's my intercooler water pump, which, you know, one thing at a time here, right? So anyway, that's, that's the finished product. I think it came out great. It, it works perfect, and uh, I'm really happy with it. So definitely check out this GEP uh, product and also uh, CEAuto.com. It's awesome configurator.